van mijn YouTube hele zeer erg is, dat weet je voor ons. Ja, wat? Het is nou, het is nou maar ding wat ik, ik als, een, als een tweede natuur kan doen, is die leiding. Uh, misschien net voor allemaal op die, op die, op die, um, op die, op die presentation. Um, ik het juist nou nou gegeven mijn nummers gaan uitkrap um, van, van mijn magnum daar als we. Um, die wat mij niet kennen, uh, net een gegeven voorstel van mijzelf. Um, so ik het, um, ek is, ek is die sien, die jongste sien van Stefan Stander. Um, ons, is, ons is vier broers. Um, en, en ek en Philip en Emil um, loop al baie jare saam, al twee ons ouders was um, stichtersleden van die Pretoria Omote Club. So, um, my pa is nummer 6 um, en ek denk Philip Emil as ek recht onthou was julle pa is nummer nummer 3. <coughs> en um, my pa lewe nog, hy, hy was gister juist uh, 83 gelees en, um, en, en so hy, hy is daarom nog een van die stichtersleden. En um, my pa, alhoewel hy die hele jare die model ijs gerei het, um, was hy meer een organiseerder in, in, die, in die rally um, omgeving plaats van om, om self te rei. Um, en ek het, uh, ja, ek het my eerste magnum het ek gedoen in, in 2003, dat ek nou die dag gaan kyk. So ek is amper 20 jaar oud in die, in die magnum um, en ek denk ek het een gemis die hele jare, ek het my engine geblaas op my, engine, op my, op my BMW en ek kon nie rei nie. Um, en ja, ek vat my rally redelijk ernstig op, ek is een van die, wat as ek rij, dan rij ek competerend, ek, ek, ek rij die somme vir die lekker daarvan nie. Um, en, en ek geniet vreselijk my, my time rally, as ek het so kan noem. Um, ek, ek rij soveel wetrine wat ek kan dier die jaar, en uh, ja, ek acht myself nogal een nog goeie rallyer, um, en, en, en verstaan wat die ding, ek is een ouwe tot my motorfiets rally, ek het in 1958 BMW, wat ek, uh, wat ek eindelijk meer rally, en dit is maar, hoe so goed neem, noem ek my, maar go-to go to bike, ek rally glad nie in voertuigen nie, behalwe as het nou een um, uh, 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 speciale model I of een model T rally of so iets is, maar as ek competerend rally, dan, dan rally ek maar op my motorfiets. Um, ja, so dit is nou net een kort um, ingang van wie ek is, uh, ek gaan die presentation nou opzet die voor, as jy weer nie gaan omgee nie, gaan ek, het is obviously in Engels, um, so, so as jy maar net daar meer sal lewe, dan is dit fijn, ek kan net omgegaan hier, kan nie? If everybody can tell me when they can see that. Ok, is it, is it up? Ok. <clears throat> yeah, so maybe maybe just in, in English. Um, so yeah, as I say, I've I've been doing I've, I've done a good couple of 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 magnums of 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 the of the twenty odd magnums I've done. I've I've won seven seven of them. Um, I've done five DJ rallies. Um, I've never performed that well in the DJ. It's really something that doesn't doesn't tickle my fancy too too much. On 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 the DJ, I run a nineteen thirty three. Um, um, BSA Houston, um, but as I said previously, most of my rallying happens with a with a 1958 BMW. So, so I'm gonna. This is a presentation we've put together with BMC over the years. So I'm just gonna run through this. Uh, if anybody has a question, if it's too technical or too quick or too over the top, um, please please stop me immediately and 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 just just raise a question and and, and we can go off topic and I can and I can explain anything as and when we need to. Okay, so so if if we look at this presentation, um, it's it's really the art and fun of, of sealed or open odor time trials. Um, so so it's it's not a race at all when you rally. It's it's all about time, um, and and how accurately you can stick to time. And times we've had to go from from a sealed or only sealed type option rally to open odor as well to basically make it viable for those. They don't want to um, com competitively uh, rally with a sealed um, in, in, a, in a sealed scenario. So uh, the dis different different aspects to rallying really are um, when when we start or, or as an organizer, you would know. Um, I mean, you really you set you set the route by an organizer. The route schedule gets 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 done, and and then obviously you have to calculate the results after after the rally. <coughs> okay. 
try to invent, most people will, will be aware of, of what we call um, SR supplementary regulations, um, referred to as the regs. These, these are always put out um, on, onto a website or, or whatever. So typically, um, we, we would always put the, the, the regs onto the various websites, specifically yeah, the POMC, obviously, um, or else the SABA website, uh, when there is a, a, a timed um, regularity. Um, all the necessary forms uh, need to be completed, and the, co and, the, and the costs of the events will be in the SRs. Um, they refer to the three SRs, as everybody would know. Um, these are the rules that you have to have to familiarize yourself with when rallying. Um, and, and that's quite important. I, I think there's many people that actually take part in events that either don't own or haven't even read the, the VSRs. So, so I would really um, encourage everybody when you do uh, an official event, um, if you haven't read them, at least read your VSRs once so that you can really understand um, what the requirement is for an event and, and then very much the regulation and the rules that a, an organizer and, and a club has to stick to when it comes to, to, to running events. Um, there's very strict rules that we need to adhere to if we, if we don't want to get ourselves into trouble. Okay, um, in terms of an event, um, you, you need to be a paid up member of a, a, a member club to, to take part in an official SEVA, SEVA event. Um, you know, the, the, the <coughs> most clubs are associated, sorry, and, and my, my apologies if I cough, I'm, I myself am coming off of COVID as of today. So, so my apologies if I do cough in between. Um, it's, it's, it's important, um, all vehicles that take part in an event must be, must be licensed vehicles. Um, Philip, correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't know what the current date is for cutoff of eligible vehicles in a SEVI event. This, this presentation, I'm not sure how up to date it is with that. 100% correct. Uh, okay. So, so, so I did get it correct then. So, so, so the current cutoff for, for eligible vehicles in SEVA is, is a 1997 and, and all vehicles um, have to be licensed and roadworthy. Okay. Um, you, you must be careful on this in some events, and, and I'm not saying this out loud, some, some organizers aren't that strict uh, when it comes to comparing vehicle licenses and discs and engine numbers. And then you get to the next event where they are extremely so, um, strict about it. And then you actually can't take part in the event. So, so just make sure that your vehicle and your documentations are correct for the various events that take, take part. Um, all, all of us as, as entry or as, as, as uh, entrants need to have an indemnity card. This is a, a once off um, um, card you need to take out. That's a couple of rand, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, this is going to get updated in the near future that we have to take out new indemnity cards. Again, Philip, maybe just correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, but if you have a current indemnity card, it, it's, it's good for, for all, all events going forward. Um, your, your navigator and any passengers with you in the vehicle also need to take out indemnity cards. Um, so, so all the sweet vehicle people, all of everybody needs to be issued with, with identity cards uh, when you're taking part in an official survey event. Okay, so by definition, what is a, a time trial or rallying? Okay, um, it's, a, it's the ability to maintain a given speed for any given time over a given distance, okay, as indicated on a route schedule. As we go down in the presentation, I, 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 we spend quite a lot of time on, on the routes and how the routes work and how the clocks work. So, so everything should come together by the end. But, uh, then we let now go freeze. Yeah, we let go freeze there as you can go. Iemand kan jij misschien van nieuw bel. Ik denk dat je daar zijn internet productie verloor. Ik ga op luid zitten. Daar is het weer te mooi.
Misschien net wat nieuw genoem het daar oor die BSA's. Um, Saba het die skrywe nou uitgekryf en ons, ek het vandag toe sekretarise gevra dat sy om moet verspry aan alle clubs. So hierdie, hierdie skrywe gaan specifiek oor wat nieuw genoem het dat by sekere bijeenkomste word die vooraf onderzoek van voertuig en baie strenger gedoen as op ander en dat jy moendlik as jou kar nie recht die rechte dokumentatie het nie dat jy die event geweier kan word so die skrywer is redelijk omvattend en ek, ek wil graag vraag dat as jy die skrywer kry en ek voel Philip sal uh, die skrywe aan amal stuur sodra hy om kry, dat ons die skrywe degelijk sal bestudeer en dat ons ook op die Saba wetwerk gaan onder uh, forums en dan gaan jy een blokkie kry wat sê uh, WSA's en dat jy op die WSA's ingaan en dat jy die, die verskillende regulaties uh, met die deur lees en dan wat interessant is, dat die regulaties wat daarin is, um, hallo Neil. Hallo, excuse man, I lost connection, apologies. Uh, I'm just coming in here with the VS, as that you said that some events are more strict than others. Yeah. And that all all competitors should should know what the VS as is all about. Mm. And as I said to you guys now, that Saba has uh, written a from the desk of Saba to all yeah. clubs relating to this specific issue yeah. and that we request that all clubs and members of clubs should go to the Saba website and get the BSRs and, and make sure that they know because ignorance of not knowing mm. Mm. Uh, is, is, is not an excuse for uh, the offence. Yep. So no, definitely. Thanks to you, Neil. Back okay. 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 So, so as I was saying, by definition, is is basically um, um, sticking to time. <coughs> uh, it it. It's, it's following the instructions on, on the route schedule that you were, that you were provided uh, uh, with. Uh, in today's times with the, with the, with the GPS trackers that I, that I touch on a bit later on as well, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not you have to stick on route, but it, it is preferable because it does tend to bugger the scoring, scoring around a bit when people go on, on jolly patrollies, as we call it, uh, with the GPS trackers. On a, on, a, on a scheduled event, all participants will, will travel the same route. And, and this, I would probably say, is true for about 90% um, of events. Sometimes you get a, a clever organizer who, who, do, who does a bit of a, a loop, which is two separate routes on the same rallying day. And you have participants going past each other and, um, and getting very confused and, and I mean, effectively, the organizer does two rallies on one day, but I mean, this happens very seldom and, and it's actually quite a lot of fun when, when, when an organizer does manage to do a bit of a loop and, and people are wondering if they're on, on the correct route, etc. Um, your arrival times uh, are, are pre-recorded or predetermined at pre, pre, predetermined points. This is in the, in the old days before we had GPS trackers, this is where we would have had the marshals sitting 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 next to the road i think as an avid rallyist this is probably the thing i miss the most about about our and let me call it the old way we rallied where we had marshals sitting next to the road because you actually knew where the marshals were sitting you go past it and it was a big discussion at the end of the rally about how many seconds you were out or or what it was when you when you when you went past the marshal with, with GPS trackers nowadays, you don't know where the marshals are and, and you can only sort of see your score right at the end. Um, as, as I was saying, our data loggers are used nowadays for, for recording the arrival times. Um, the, the, the data loggers make use of, of satellites. Uh, the loggers are provided either for hire or, or, or purchasing. 
uh, I, I own my own loggers, and, and what you would see is, is most people that are avid radius, I in fact own three, so I run with three, three, three loggers in case I, I lose one at any one time. Um, what we tend to do at our club is we have uh, the Pretoria Motor Club has, has, a, has many loggers that we, that we rent out to people when we, when we run events. And we, and we have had some issues with loggers. This is why we run with multiple loggers, the top radiists. Um, we would give a second logger to, to most participants to make sure if there is a problem that the second, <coughs> excuse me, that the second logger can then, can then come in. As I just mentioned, um, traditionally the marshals uh, would sit next to the road. Um, I, I haven't done an event for some time where, where marshals are used. Um, Email. this is a hint, hint for you that's organizing some rallies for us. Um, you, you know, we, we, we would love to just have maybe a marshal board next to the road where a marshal point is, because then it just gives you an idea of where you're getting time. But we also understand the complications around, around having a, a chief marshal ride in front of the, 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 the field and having to put these boards up. But I still think it would bring back some excitement in terms of knowing where the marshals were. Um, when you enter a rally, very important, uh, you'll see on your entry form, you have, you have nominated speeds that you can enter at, and um, it would typically be an A, B, and C, uh, um, some, some rallies up to a D group. Um, your, your, your A speed group, I think, is maximum 55, uh, email correct me, uh, 55, 65, 75, man. It depends, Neil, you can actually, in the next, you can actually stabilize it and the the Mampur rally is 60, 70, and 85. 80. Okay. So so this would this would typically come out in your in your in your SRs um, right in the beginning when 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 your regulations or, or or when the rally is advertised. So just make sure when you enter a rally that you enter at a speed that the vehicle you're traveling in is sufficiently either slow or fast enough for for the speed that you that you're running. Um, many people tend to enter fast vehicles at a, at, at a slower speed, this is not necessarily the correct thing to do because the older cars and the older gearboxes really don't like running at speeds that, they, that they're not, not made for. And, and in fact, when you start rallying and you start understanding rally, the faster you're going, in fact, the less chance you have of making an error because just it's just semantics. It's, it's your distance. You're just crossing your distances faster than what you would when you're slower. So, so make sure that you run your vehicle in, in the required speed that, it, that, it, that, that your vehicle is, is comfortable at. So then the different categories now, um, I, I mean, historically in the, in the early days of me rallying, you really only had a sealed odor. Um, uh, but as, as we've, we've seen over the years in, in many events, um, we, we, we're battling to get enough entries into events and, we, and we've had to come up with, with alternate ways um, to, to, get, to get the numbers up uh, in terms of, and let me use the Magnum again as an example. This historically was a motorcycle event. This is now for motorcycles and motor cars. And, and, and on top of changing from just a motorcycle event to a dual event, we also then introduced uh, an open odor um, um, class as well as a, a touring class, okay? Um, we, 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 we really encourage people to, to take part in either the sealed or open odor, um, you know, but, but the touring class is definitely there to, to get people interested in railing. And then we're hoping that they, that they go from touring into open odor and then maybe from open odor into a sealed odor sort of competition environment. Okay. Um, important, I think, irrespective of whether you're in a sealed competitive environment or whether you're just touring, you have to enter um, all the necessary documentation. You've got to enter the rally officially as you would have, irrespective of what, what class you're riding at. Um, and it's really important to, to complete all the forms um, and, and et cetera on the documentation process. So don't think because you're running a touring class that you can just jump onto the route and, and, and join the rally. It, it doesn't work like that. <clears throat> okay, so what is a sealed odor? Um, I'll show you a bit later on in, in terms of, of, of the watches and, and so on, but, but a vehicle's instrument that, you, that you're riding with has to be sealed. Uh, so typically on a motorbike or even on a car, if you have a speedo, whether it works or doesn't work, you have to in fact mask it up with masking tape. Um, what you would find is your, your, your steward that is doing the, the scrutineering of the vehicles 
will, will, will and should check this and, and they will only sign off your scrutineering form when all this is, is done. Okay. Um, no external devices for recording of speed, so no GPSs um, are, are allowed on, on the vehicles. Uh, you know, I think we all always have to remember that there's, there's, there's nothing in railing. It's, 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 it's basically bragging rights only. So, so nobody's stopping you from running a sealed event using a GPS. But I mean, I guess you've got to look in a mirror at the end of the day and say, I won or didn't win the rally um, without using additional um, um, uh, devices. Okay, <laughs> so I'll, I'll touch on it a bit later on. How do we keep our speeds? Uh, we, we use um, um, stop uh, uh, clocks, normal old uh, stopwatches as we would call them. Okay, speed tables and, and kilometer stones. I touch on that in a bit more detail as we as we go on in the presentation, and it will make a bit more sense. Um, uh, this getting to know your vehicle. This is this is critically important. Um, uh, people that know me or people that know your top rallyists, they will 99% of the time always rally with the same bike or same vehicle. You, you eventually start learning at, at this speed, the, the vehicle starts vibrating. On a, mo a motorbike, something else starts vibrating under your legs and then you know you're doing that speed and et cetera. So, so sticking to the same vehicle definitely helps you in terms of improving your, your railing skills. <laughs> Okay, what is open odor? It's really identical to a um, to a, a sealed odor, other than the fact that you can use external instruments. So, so, so when we're railing against people that run open odor, they are running GPSs, they're running fancy software on cell phones that they put the route in when they get it, um, and 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 they they they. Uh, do exactly the same as a closed odor, except they allow you to use GPSs and, and they don't have to close their speedometers. Uh, however, you'll find your top open odor guys, um, whether they have a car speedo or not, it makes no difference because they're so, so poor. Uh, they definitely, they have very fancy GPSs and software, as I say, to, to keep themselves on, on, on speed. Uh, just uh, FYI for, for your information, however, You'd be quite surprised how often when, when we in, in a sealed odor environment run against open odors that in fact there are some of the sealed odor guys. Well, I, I, when, when I say some, definitely only the winning people in open odor um, would sometimes beat us on our sealed odors. Uh, in terms of probably the majority of the field of open odors, we actually even still beat them with our sealed odors in comparison to keeping time. We, that, that, that's our how accurate we really with sealed odors and our, and our stopwatches. Okay. Um, yeah, so just arriving at the, at the event, I, th I think this is also a, a very under underemphasized point when, you, when you're running competitively. Um, make sure that you get there uh, with, with, with some time to spare. Don't, don't, don't arrive 10 or 15 minutes before a rally and quickly try and get hold of your paper and do the paperwork. You, you get rushed, you get, you get yourself into a position, you're not calm when you get into a car. Um, so if, you, if you're gonna rally, rally competitively um, or even non-competitively, because it's important for the organizers that they get the people through the, the documentation and scrutineering as early as possible so that the event can, can take part, okay? Um, some, some stuff to have, uh, again, I'll show you a bit later how a clipboard looks uh, in, a, in a vehicle, have a, have a clipboard of, of sort of A5 size um, to, to accommodate the route schedules. As I say, I'll show you a bit later. Your speed tables, <coughs> apologies, your speed tables, um, you, you can also print out or, or you get little books that, that are available. Again, I'll show you how the speed tables look a, a bit later on. Um, press stick for mounting your clocks, maybe against the windows um, of the vehicle if they're not mounted very nicely on your, on your clipboards. Masking tape uh, to, to stick your roots together um, if you're on a motorcycle or to close your odos or, or whatever. But a bit of masking tape is always worth something happening. And then your normal station, your pens and pencils, your colored markers, if you like, coloring your, your root schedules and, and so on. Okay, um, yeah, report to your documentation. Um, very often you forgot to fill in your, uh, you either didn't have an indemnity number, you've got to take your indemnity out. 
uh, or you forgot to put your dating number in of the vehicle or something. So just make sure you, as I say, get there in time. Um, you'll get your competitor's number. Uh, this then has to get put onto your vehicle and then your vehicle has to get, get scrutinized. So they check your instrumentation is sealed. Uh, your number, as I just mentioned, must be fitted onto your vehicle. Um, scrutineering will then sign off your, your vehicle that it is scrutineered. And only then will you be issued with your with your route for, for the day. So, so when you get to documentation, you'll do the documentation, you have your vehicle scrutinized, you go back to the organizing table and only then will they issue you with your route that you can then start putting onto your clipboard and, and going through. Um, loggers will be cleared um, if you if you get, if you hire the loggers. However, it's not critical to clear loggers because it's a sort of a, a, a first in first out environment or sorry last in first out. So so the loggers will overwrite each other. But but many of the organisers just like clearing the loggers before a new event. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned. Um, Time trial requires at least two of the above. The uh, route schedule normally has all three. Route schedules are traditionally pre-calculated. Um, if it's a timed event, it has to be pre-calculated. Um, and, and effectively, you're running on three main, main points. You're running on distance, time, and speed. This, again, will, will make more sense when I show you what a, what a, what a, what a typical um, route schedule looks like. But those three are really the most important part in terms of when you're doing a, a rally. Okay, route schedules come in, in pre-calculated format, as just mentioned. Um, speed entered for is a maximum speed. So at any time during your rally, if you enter a 60 kilometer um, speed group, you will never be taken above that speed. Okay, if, <coughs> excuse me, if for some other reason you, you do end up on a speed above that, then it would typically either be for safety reasons only um, or there would be a mistake on the on the route schedule. So even in terms of safety, the organizer will take your maximum speed into account um, when when calculating the route. Okay, uh, when when going through your route schedule, when you get it, uh, I think very very important. This has happened at numerous um, events where you get given the wrong speed group, as an example. So if you entered a speed group A, B, or C, make sure at the top of your of your route schedule when you get it. It's very clearly marked what, what speed group it is. So double check that, and then also make sure that all your pages are there. So in other words, if it shows that there must be four or six pages in your last page, make sure that one, two, three, four, five, and six pages are there. That also has happened. It's, it's a manual thing that gets, gets clipped together the night before by the organizers. So they might accidentally not put page two, and then you're a bit screwed when, you, when you're running, okay? Um, as I mentioned, everybody runs on the same route. Um, the marshal points are the same for everybody. Uh, routes are, are in kilometers an hour and, and, and basically your normal hours, minutes and seconds metric time, if I want to call it that. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is typically what a, a route schedule looks like. Um, uh, if, if you look at this, this is a, a, a Durban to Joburg. So this is an old D, a DJ rally 2015. Um, if you look at the top here, um, there you can see in the top there, this thing says the pages in this route schedule is equal to six. And now Murphy's Law, this one doesn't have the speed group um, in it, but, but just make sure you'll see on the modern route schedules, it, it will clearly state your, your, your speed group that you are entered into. So when you start with a rally, um, if you look at the top there, you have your distance on the left, you have your speed on the, on, on the middle, and you have your, your, your time um, on the third, and then obviously your instruction or clue in, in, in the fourth. I'm going to just jump. Um, I'm going to jump forward a bit if I can, and I'm going to come back to that now. Give me one sec. Um, there. So a typical speed rally table looks like this. I'm going to go back and we'll come back to, to the rally tables. Um, so if you if you have a look on the left there or at the top, this shows your, your speeds for 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, and 63. So <coughs> when we go back to the route schedule now, I'm going to show you typically how your rally tables and your route schedule co coincides with, with, with each other. 
Um, and if you look at the top, let's let's stick to 58 kilometers an hour. You'll see there as well kilometers. Then there's then there's your 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 minutes and seconds. Okay, that you that you have per per kilometer and per speed on your rally table. So if you look at kilometer point zero one zero two three all the way up to kilometer one, these are the seconds. So if you were doing and let's let's use sixty kilometers an hour, the one on the third column, as it's easiest to 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 because sixty one minute is is one minute. When you're doing hundred meters, you do point six seconds. When you do two hundred meters, you're doing twelve seconds. Point three hundred meters is eighteen seconds, and so your time increments up to where you have one kilometer, I'm just trying to see if... Um, There's a mistake there, definitely. Can't be 0.6 seconds. Yeah, it's actually six seconds, you know. Yeah, it's but, uh, it's, it's just incorrect, yeah. yeah I'm just... Um, can I, is there a pointer on this thing somewhere? Use your mouse. Yeah, I can't... I can't pass a pointer either, she saw. I put on the spotlight. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'll just scratch on the door, mouse. I know you've got a. There we go. Okay. Can everybody see the little red dot? Yes, on, on the screen. Okay. So if we look at 60, so if we have a look at 60, so for, as you say, six seconds, 12 seconds, and then for one, one minute is one kilometer. Is one minute for two kilometers is two minutes for three kilometers is, is three minutes. Okay, so just keep this in mind um, as we. Okay, so if we go back to this, then <coughs> more two two very important um, um, comments in, in the instruction is the start of regularity and the end of regularity. Okay, we'll touch on the different different um, stages in a rally that, that can happen as well a bit later on. Uh, I think just important in red here, start of regularity. Keeping in mind, if you are not in regularity, so from, from the start to the start of regularity, there will be no marshals ever. Um, there might be, uh, what do they call them? Um, keeping honest, uh, there's a, a honesty check or something like that. So that might be you stop at stop streets. Um, if there's a danger in intersection, you might have a marshal standing there or somebody like that. But in today's times with, with loggers, this very seldom happens, if ever. So now important is out of regularity, you'll see they normally keep you to 25 um, in, a, in, a, in a standard rally. It's normally about 30, 35 kilometers, um, which will give you ample time to get to your start of regularity within the, the required time. Uh, I'll touch just now on, on the time of, of starting your, your master clock on, on zero. So you'll see um, if a rally starts at eight o'clock in the morning, the vehicles, um, and, and I'm sort of touching on, on four parts of the, of the presentation now, but it's important for me to touch on it while you're looking at the route schedule. Um, vehicles leave in one minute intervals. So your first vehicle will leave at one minute past eight, then two minutes past eight, and so on and so forth. It's very critical <coughs> that when you start your event, whether you're starting at one minute past eight or at 8.45, depending on the number of your vehicle, that when you start, that your master clock is on zero. Your entire rallying process is extremely reliant on the fact that you start with a zero uh, on your master clock to ensure that you stick with time. So, so you, you don't want to start at 8.45 and you don't actually know what your zero is, because if you look as you go further down, every time you get a clue, it's related back to your master clock, your zero. So stop 12 seconds, you must turn right. At 17 seconds, you take the slip road. At 33 seconds, you take your traffic light. Now, if you don't have your zero clock correct when you leave, you're automatically out with everything that you do going forward. So that's very important. Um, and I'm going to explain to you in, in, in not so much detail, although the presentation does cover it, but it can be confusing if somebody's not showing you on the day of the event on how to calculate your, your master clock that it automatically starts at zero, but I'll explain that a bit later on. What you would then see is at your start of regularity, your, your speeds start changing. So it goes from 33, then you go 35 at the next speed, at the next clue, they change your speed. At the next clue, they change your speed or they don't change your speed. 
but <laughs> your speeds now become really important in relation to your to your to your rally tables if if that makes sense does is everybody following me that i'm not losing people here okay okay so people have different uh, methods of dealing with the root schedule um uh, uh read through the root schedule before the time I, I i must be honest with you um as a personal the way i rally um i literally stick my root schedule together and i climb on my motorcycle and i go i i concentrate quite 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 heavily when i'm riding so i'm not one but what you will find a lot of people use highlights to indicate turn left start of open sections other color to turn right so you'll see some people spend literally an, a half an hour to an hour before really um, reading through it and really putting quite substantial markers on 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 their rally on their rally route schedule that that's going to be up to you as an individual on 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 how you want to do that you'll see there you can calculate your time and distance between the instructions um, uh, the same people that go to the extent of of the of, of highlighting stuff you'll see they even sit there with their with their stopwatches and if i go back to the previous page so um if i go back there you'll find people you'll find people that they that they calculate that, that for instance from the sign no dumping through to drummond they, they on the side here they'll they'll calculate the distance so they so if you look at it's at 5.05 kilometers to 7.15 then next door yeah they will write 2.1 kilometers and then for the next one they'll say it's three point something or one point something or whatever the distance is uh, so that they can relate how quickly the speed changes are from one distance to the next so so some people go to quite a lot of an effort on their route schedules prior to to, to the actual rally itself okay as i mentioned i'm going to show you a rally box a typical motorcycle rally box a bit later on you stick the pages together and then we have a, a runner on the on the boxes where we have our speed tables and and our route schedule in front of us with our stopwatches and i'll show you how we ready on the bikes a bit later for those that haven't actually seen it yet um yes they're important i mentioned that that when you look at this you you have important um, um things you have a start of open section uh this is important as i mentioned any open section um <coughs> between an open section you also won't be timed so you're not necessarily going to get taken out of regularity but for instance in many of the very scenic rallies some of the organizers are, are nice enough to us where if you're going through a, a beautiful pass and you want to focus a bit on the, on the scenery and not really they would in regularity they would as an example have an open section and and you can actually run in any open section you don't have to stick to the times um as per on the route schedule because you also in an open section won't be be, be be timed in terms of a marshal they will then take you out of an open section which automatically then puts you into into um back into a regularity if it's between a start of regularity and end of regularity then important as i mentioned and as i showed you on a route schedule you'll start you'll go and then there will be a start of regularity then you know from that time on you are then in a, a competitive environment within the rally and then when they take you out of a competitive environment it will say specifically end of regularity um, i always say to people um, when you so typically when you have a fuel stop um, or you're going through a town or something uh, the organizer should if they are running a safe rally and according to regs they should take you out of regularity um, but when you are, for instance, at a fuel stop, put your fuel in your bike, or when you're at a lunch stop, have lunch. When you're finished, climb in your vehicle, climb on your bike, and go to the start of regularity to ensure that you don't have uh, traffic lights or a speed cop that pulls you off or something that, that then prevents you from leaving your fuel stop or your, or, your, or your lunch stop and getting to your start of regularity. It's very important to start your regularity on time. Otherwise, you just play catch up. <coughs> and if you're not a, a really good rallyist to do, to start understanding where you are time wise, if you start your regularity, it's um, late. 
it becomes extremely difficult for you to um, to 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 actually find out where you are and where you should be in terms of your time. <coughs> so when when you when you provide it with your start time on, on a on a rally, so that's where I mentioned 801, 802, or 845. Um, all the watches are now calculated, and your master clock that will be that will be at the at the start of the event are set to what they call atomic time. So any all of us that now own smartphones today, if you have a look, go into your either Apple Apple Store or your your your, your Play Store or whatever it is. Do a search for atomic clock, and you've got numerous examples of an atomic clock app that you can download. So these, these, those, all those apps are linked to the to 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 um, to the satellites, and you can set your clocks on your vehicle or on your on your on your on your on your motorbike according to that app that you download on your phone. You don't necessarily have to use their master clock because their master clock is set in an atomic time as well. So since since smartphones, um, a master clock is at the event for those people that don't have atomic clock on their phones. But if you've got a smartphone, just download the atomic time and you can set all your clocks in according to that. Okay. Um, oh, I mentioned the rest. Okay, loggers, as I mentioned, are, are, are used to record your time. So um, loggers, again, are also GPS uh, driven. Um, I think I think the intervals that we log at I think is three seconds if I'm not mistaken that the software that we that we use is three seconds but irrespective of what it is you have the loggers on you and these loggers you just put in your pocket <coughs> you travel with them and at the end of the event we have a, a chief scorer you you get to the end of the event uh, you give this logger to them they plug it in onto your computer it downloads your route and your times. Um, and it calculates accordingly. Um, so, so I think important point why we put this by design, the loggers are, are fairly delicate. It, it's electronic in, um, 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 device. So, so, so don't throw it onto your dash in full sun. Um, I, we always try and tell people don't put your cell phone and the loggers right next to each other. Uh, if you have two loggers, Put one logger, I don't know, in your wife's pocket and one in your pocket, um, and and keep them separately, just so that if anything is going to interfere with one logger, the chances are, are good that that the other one will be okay. Okay, uh, I've mentioned that loggers are, are are normally for hire at, at most events, and as I said, must be placed in a prominent position. This is really not that important. I've got to be honest with you. Um, Many people think they've got to stick a logger onto the window or in the in whatever. You really don't need to. If you drop it into your pocket um, or you put it into your wife's purse or something like that, they they pretty they pretty bulletproof as far as as far as picking up a signal goes. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> the critical. Part of a, of a, of a, of a, um, some of the loggers we have found can take some time to, to pick up the, the satellites. So we, we say to people, try and put them on sort of 10 minutes prior to the start of your event. Um, we've got, we really have had numerous people that get to the end of the event and, and, and then they've actually never put the logger on. And, and then you run the whole event, you're not scored. Um, and then they get pretty, pretty annoyed with the organizer when it was yourself that never switched the logger on. So, so please make sure um, you'll see we use two different types of loggers. We've got a Holox and a Camo. These are just different versions, newer versions. This is a parkeermeter. You can go to the house <laughs> and, and to that point, Iso said, um, and Amal, I, this is absolutely what the tour will be in September. We don't know what we're going to do in September. In September, we're going to get a chance to get a chance to get a chance to get a score on your spot. And that's going to be 8 or 9 or 10 kilometers long. 
En die, um, en jy gaat een spoed rijden daar, of as jy die dag 1, 2 en 3 rijd die selwe spoed, die stikkie, en jy word dan geskoor op die stikkie, so, waar hierdie ouwens 200 of 250 kilo's die dag so rijd, gaan ons vir, vir 8 of 10 of 20 kilo's die dag so rijd, um, en dit is net een gedeelte op die route. Ja, ek wou sê, wacht, maar ek moet nie so baie dink nie, ek hou nie daarvan nie. <laughs> en die ene die hele ding is, hierdie is, is full on running, dit is as jy, sê nou maar jy doen die Milligan, of die, of die DJ, of die ja, ja. Uh, Magnum, of al die goed is, maar ons, ons praat eindelijk van die tour, nee? ons praat van die tour en nie die rally nie, um, ja, die tour gedeelte is net al om, om, a, om a bykie a, a, a competitie te gee om te sê hoe die hierdie oud gewend of die oud het droog gemaakt. Ja maar jylle, skies, ek is terug, skies. Ons is amper dier, ek is nou klaar die man. Nee, die ja, alles is net bekom het oor september maand sy toer, nee, um, het is net ja. nie, hulle is soos, <laughs> hulle is so bekom het te wees nie. Um, <laughs> ek denk, ek denk ons baie goed wat, wat eigenlijk baie relevant is, en, en dit gaan oor die rally, rally tables, en dan die, mm. die, die sommetjes wat ek neem aan, jy gaan ons net dan net iets gaan vertel. Ja, ons kom nou daarby uit, ja. Ja. Mm. Okay, so so let's get quickly, let's finish and then and then yeah, and then we can open up for any questions um, in terms of that. I think I think guys, you must remember, I'm I'm explaining uh, uh, in in pretty much detail. Yeah, I think this is this is for those people that are interested in in being from extremely competitive as well. Um, and and you, and, and and we'll touch it, uh, uh, numerous times at the end. Uh, the important part of our training is to enjoy it. So so if this looks too um, involved, then you do it for the fun uh, and you learn how to rally over a period of time. <coughs> but yeah, vehicles normally depart, as I said, one minute intervals. Um, important is that your main and master clock is yeah. at zero, as I mentioned on the on, on, yeah. on the demo. I can see all my master looks in Ah, shit. Hang on, hang on. I can check if I get on the. Um, en is nabij, want of, of baie ver, of baie sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, can you see again? Ja, daar sê het ook nie. Okay. Alright, so 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 um, well, so, no, no. so so as I mentioned, your 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 your, your zero time um, that starts on your on your route schedule. Um, now, yet two or there's two ways to actually get your your master clock. Now, I'd like to show you just what a typical. Um, so so if you look at an example of a clipboard, I th I think um, depending on how how seriously you're going to be be rallying, um, you would you would typically over here have, um, I would normally, uh, and let me go to the next page, I'm going to show you what my what my bike um, rally box, so that is typically a, a bike rally box that, that I rally with, <coughs> so what you would see on a bike, and, and your coordination between a bike is exactly the same as a vehicle, so whether you're using that clipboard, um, where your route schedule would typically be down here, and you have three watches, on a bike, unfortunately, you have a navigator, we don't, so we have to run this on the motorcycles. Um, so there's your route schedule at the top, okay? And here's our, 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 our um, uh, speed tables at the bottom, and then I have three stopwatches on, on in front of me. My right-hand stopwatch is always my master clock. So this is where we're talking that when when your route schedule says to you over here, and now unfortunately it's just not on zero there, but that would typically, when you pull away there, this watch over here has to be zero together with your route schedule on the time that you are prescribed to leave. Okay, does that make sense? I think it's quite important. The other two stopwatches for now, ignore them. Those are purely used to keep your speed while you while you rally. So the most important part is even if you're going to have your first rally or, or most of your rallies, this is the most, most important part is that when you pull away at your time is that this master clock of yours is at zero in conjunction with your, your route schedule on that side. 
So again, going back to, to setting it, you basically have two ways. You either can put that stopwatch and onto, it's onto a, a stopwatch function. And when you have your starter at the, at the beginning of the rally, when he counts you down, you can just start your stopwatch when your time is due and your stopwatch will start at zero. You have two challenges when that happens is you either don't have a starter. So in other words, if you've got to leave at seven minutes past eight and there's not a starter that's counting you down, then you're a bit screwed if you if you get it wrong when you start your stopwatch. Okay. Oh, come on. So, so, so you start your stopwatch, which I prefer not doing uh, because you also have a chance while you're rallying um, if you look at how close your stopwatches are to each other, I'm just going to jump forward again to show you. Um, if you look at how close those stopwatches are to each other, and let's assume that's your master clock. If you bump your stop um, button over there and you stop your master clock at any time during the rally, then obviously your timing going forward is all going to be incorrect. So the other way that you do this is you calculate in. Now, this is going to be confusing, and I'm not even going to try and explain it to you in detail. I think, I think if ever we had an event, as I say, go to an experienced rallyist and they will explain this to you. But, but all stopwatches, um, when you use the time function on it, should have a 24-hour time function. So, so to make it easiest to, to, to try and explain, um, let's say you've got one hour to go to your starting time. You then set the time on your master clock to 2300 hours. And in one hour's time, when you leave, your, your watch will automatically go to zero. Does that make sense? So I'm not going to, this is actually quite a shitty example because it's quite complicated. I should just should have rounded it off. So if it says here, what they're trying to say here, if the time, if you had one hour, 48 minutes to go before starting, you have to set your watch one hour, or the watch needs to be set, if you look here, at 22.52. So, so that's where I use the example. If this, if this was one hour to go, you would set this over here to 2300 hours. And in an hour's time, 60 minutes time, when you pull away, your watch will read zero. Am, am I losing anybody or, am, or, or is most people should be familiar with a 24 hour structure? That does it make sense what I'm saying? What? I'm just saying thank you. Okay. <laughs> Um, what I always do, um, even even do, having done this for many many years, um, it's quite imagine it's quite quite incredible how your mind plays games. So what you do is go look at the vehicle ahead of you and the vehicle behind you a couple of times with your master clock, and make sure that everybody's in sync, and that will then give you a good 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 a good indication on on whether you your master clock is set correctly or not. Okay. Okay, start of regularity. This is where I mentioned that it's normally um, 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 a distance away from, from the actual start. Uh, you can choose to wait at your departure point uh, or else you can move, as I, as I mentioned, uh, to your actual start of regularity point. Okay. Now, important is that should a starter be used at, 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 at the competition, uh, you may not leave prior to the starting time. Okay, or having passed the starter. So important thing, you, there's two things. You either wait for them to count you down, which then gives you a, another indication that your master clock is set correctly. Um, alternatively, you at least have to pass that starter so that they can show you and mark you off that you are a starter in the morning. Uh, what, what sometimes happens is, is people don't start and then the starters must be able to tick you off and say, hang on, number 10 went through, or number 12 went through, or number 13 didn't start the morning. So important that you actually pass the starter. So, so if, you, if you wait for the starter to, to, to set you off, again, keeping in mind 
that your, your open section before start of regularity is normally quite a slow speed. So my advice to everybody is get to start of regularity as soon as possible. If, you're, if, you're, if your speed in, in non-regularity is 30 k's an hour, it doesn't mean you have to do 30 k's an hour. Do 40 or 50 kilometers an hour if you can. Get yourself to the start of regularity so that you can be calm and make sure that you start your start of regularity on time. Okay. Um, what are we? Uh, okay, this is just where I explained how how the how the speed 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 um, um, tables work. Uh, I, I I mean we can I'll touch on that again briefly. I'm not going to go through it over here. Well, this is exactly the next page. This is where I explained to you what they were just explaining on the previous page. Is where I mentioned your your hundred meters um, and then kilometer. Now to give you guys an indication. If there are 200 meter stones next to the road, I, I might use one or two of them just to get my bike up to speed and, and constant speed, but I would predominantly only run my stopwatches per kilometer. And but I can do that because I know my bike very well. So most people will actually use the 100, 200, 400, etc., up to a kilometer point of view. But that's really up to you as a as a radius on how you want to and how how often you want to check your speeds. Um, <clears throat> so this is what I mentioned. So all of you would know that next to the road, you have your, and I'm going to quickly just go to there, you have your speed um, stones. Uh, nowadays, they've been replaced with those little blue boards um, on all the new roads. Um, on the roads where you have your old white cement uh, uh, like this, uh, it, it really is becoming far and few between that they still exist. So very often you're riding on the feel of your pants, but this is typically a stone that you would be using um, to keep your speeds as far as those kilometer um, timetables go. Okay. Um, as mentioned, the space, they, they either 200 meter or one kilometer apart. Okay. Uh, the stones on the left hand side normally count up. Um, in, in, in relation to your direction and the stones on the right hand side are, are, are normally counting down. So typically if you're going left, it will be one, two, three, four. Um, if you're going and the stones on your right hand side, it will be going 10, nine, eight, seven. That's, that's normally the, the guideline. Um, many people use white lines um, to, to try and keep speed uh, on a motorbike. Personally, I don't do this because it's, because it's quite dangerous because then you're focusing too much on the on, on 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 trying to keep your speed on white lines and historically there was very strict regulations on on the distances of, of how white lines were painted now, nowadays they get painted in any any length and any distance from each other but it is still a indication for people that want to rally very seriously and if you've got a navigator sitting next to you you can actually count the white lines. Now, if you look at this, this is the speed tables that they use for that. So this is typically, if you're counting five lines, uh, for uh, this is the speeds and the seconds that you need you to be doing on, 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 the, on the white lines. But personally, I, I don't do this. I, I, I really don't do this. It's, it's a lot of work. And, and as I say on the motorcycles, I find this extremely dangerous. So this would be, I don't even own tables like this. I, I'd have to ask Claude where you got these tables. Um, uh, so those that are interested in, in counting white lines when railing, please, please uh, just reach out to Emil. We'll have to find out where to get these. Um, when you're in a car, as I say, a navigator can count for you, but on a, on a motorcycle, there's, there's no ways that, that, I, that I count this. It's just too dangerous. Okay, I mentioned that's what, the, that's what, your, what your signs look like. Um, so, so what you would typically do as you're going along, um, if we go back to, to a route schedule very quickly so I can show you how this works. Um, when, when, when this thing changes and it says to you, okay, go from 35 kilometers an hour to 38 kilometers an hour, you then take your speed table, <coughs> this one here, you would go to, and let's assume that speed was 58. You go to your page that has 58. And when you find your first kilometer stone, like that 26 that I just showed you now, you then use 
your other two stops, your other two stopwatches. Now on the bike, let me show you on my bike when it makes more sense. I then would start this watch when I get to number 26, to kilometer stone number 26. I start the stopwatch and I run my time. When I get to kilometer, and let's assume we're counting uh, up or down. Sorry, 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 sorry. So, so let's assume the next stone is 27. If I started my stopwatch and I was doing and I was having to do 60 kilometers an hour because it's easy for calculating per kilometer, you're doing one minute. So if I go from 26 to 27, my stopwatch that I've now started in the middle should be at one minute when I get to kilometer number 27. If I get to kilometer number 27, let's assume at 50 seconds, then I know I'm too fast because I should only be there at one minute. Then I need to slow down on my, my, my motorbike or, or the vehicle that you're traveling in uh, to make sure that when you get to 28, that it must then be two minutes. If I get to 27, let's assume I'm on one minute, 10 seconds, that then means that I'm too slow and I need to speed up a bit. Does that make sense to everybody? So, so effectively, you use your stones next to the road per kilometer. You make sure that you understand what speed you should be doing. And, and, and wait, just let me get your speed tables in. Have I missed it now? Yeah. So if I'm doing 60, I must be there at one minute at, at number 27. If I get to 28 and I'm, let's say, two minutes, 30 seconds, I'm too slow, I must speed up. And so you try and keep yourself per kilometer to the one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute marks as far as the kilometer stones go. Now, this is if you're spoiled by an organizer who gives you long sections of, of stones next to the road and he gives you long sections of speeds that allows you to keep your time very often, and obviously in between the rally, the organizer is changing your speeds and you've got to change and you've got to use the other stopwatch or the two stopwatches on the left now as you change your speeds and as you pick up the stones to try and keep, to try and keep time um, in, 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 in terms of the speed that you should be traveling at. Okay, that was just again the indications. Um, the intention of rallying again is to obtain the least amount of errors per marshal point um, as I mentioned, good idea to use the same vehicle where possible because you really just get to, 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 to know the vehicle. Um, making use of a navigator, try to use the same person so that you can grow as a team together. Uh, and this just depends on, on, how, on how serious you want to actually rally. Um, riding a motorcycle, it's quite amazing. It looks quite complicated, but, it, but it's really easiest. I think people that have, that have actively rallied um, um, Imel and, and Philip will know 99% of the time the bikes are, are beating beating the cars. Um, uh, it's just uh, the zone we in on the motorbikes and, and the rally, we, we just seem to be um, better at, at, at getting everything to work together. Um, then I think important here is is just just a, just a closing slide is is be aware of the vehicles around you when we're rallying. We, we tend to get caught up in our little world. Uh, we forget there are other vehicles, other, other vintage vehicles on the road, as well as more modern vehicles. Um, not all the modern vehicles, even if, we, if, we, even if it's a competition and we have our numbers on, are, are patient with us. So, so just always be aware of, of the vehicle and the surroundings. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Guys, if, if I'm at a rally uh, with somebody and, 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 and you have questions and you need help to get your master clock set in, Etc. Please ask. Um, you'll find most rallyists are, are more than prepared to help. Um, the more you rally, the more familiar you become with the sport. Um, if if this really seems very complicated, uh, my advice is start in a touring class. Then you move from a touring class into a into a time class. Um, it, it it makes it much easier um, to to understand and learn rallying, if you want to call it that. Uh, this is a guide. I mean, it's it's no um, it's it's no no stuck and fast rule on how you should rally, but it gives you just a, a very broad um, indication. Um, 
and and I think important is, is it's fun. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I take railing seriously, and many people do, but but ultimately it's up to you and 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 um, your partners and and the vehicle that you're riding in on on how serious you want to take this. But whether you're doing it seriously or or not, uh, I think it's important at the end of the day to have a beer together or or, or a glass of cooling, and 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 make sure that you enjoy the event. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I have to say. So um, if there's any questions, please feel free to 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 ask. New buy dumpy. Yeah, please. Buy there's buy interesting. I think the old one here is the meeste wat ons verwacht het is dat ik 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 denk ik zal mijn mijn rallying partner als ik wil ergens dat een rally moet veranderen. Want zo zit het van het moeilijk met maanden langs elkaar. So, <laughs> en, 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 en ik moet zeggen dat is dat is raar ook niet. Dus dat is dat dat kan dat kan dat kan vreselijke risie maken tussen een navigator en een en een bestuurder als een oude ernstig rally. So ja, wees voorzichtig als jij die die vrouw samvat. Um, vat jij daar die girlfriend samen, want als zij vier kwart is, dan kan zij vijf. Dat maakt niet zaak niet. Um, <laughs> Maar, maar ja, dit, 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 dit is nogal, maar, maar ik moet zeggen, ik geniet vreselijk die, die reiling, die competerende gedeelte daarvan. Um, en ik denk als een mens dit eerst beter verstaan, dan, dan, dan is dit eigenlijk rechtig iets. Ik denk voor mensen wat niet verstaan, nie, um, ons rally, als we bijvoorbeeld, kom ons sê, um, op een gemiddeld, op een rally van zo'n so 300 kilo's een dag, um, die, die ouders wat gewoonlijk wen, uh, jou, jou wenners en je top 10, Um, zal hier in die omgeving van een maximum zeker hier zo bij zo so, so, so 60 seconden is maar twee minuten tegen te een persoon hee voor die hele dag zo niet. Zo die boonste ouders is redelijk, is redelijk ernstig en, 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 en ons, en ons krijgen het recht om, om ons tijden redelijk af te krijgen. Um, en, en als je als je competerend rally en je komt bij een rally aan, en een paar van jullie zullen nou ken, ken Gavin Walton. En, en een paar van die groot namen van de rally, je weet zomaar als je één fout maakt, is je rally voorbij. Want, want, want die, die top rally en staat, daar gaan iemand wees wat meer fout maakt. Nie. En, en so as jy, as jy, as jy wil kijken om breaking rights te op die wen, dan moet je maar wakker slapen en je moet concentreren. Van Neil, ik denk, ik uh, heb nou de voorraad gehad om de laatste twee DJ's samen met jullie te gaan bij te woord. En ik uh, heb met die ouwe gepraat wat tweede was op dag 1 en toen was daar een verschil die, die ouwe wat tweede gekom het op dag 1 en 30 secondes of 30 punten tegen hom gehad en die ouwe wat eerste was was, in, was 29 seconden so, wat Niel gesê het en ek meen wat is jylle eerste dagse kilo's geweest is dus voor die 300 kilo geweest. Voor so, die 300 kilo geweest, ja, ja, ja. Ja. En omdat je die huis weet niet waar die, waar die, die, die Marshall points is, nie, want dan het lang is. Voor die huis, dan maak uit. Dan maak definitief uit. Ik denk Neil, wat jij wat jy nagelaat het om te zeggen, wat eigenlijk baie belangrijk is, is op de 300 kilo is dat tussen 18 en 22 plekken wat je hebt checkt. Ja. So as jy vinnig gaan kyk, sê nou op een rally van 300 kilometer, sê daar is een paar open sections, is het elke 10 kilometer check te leeuw op, op een of ander manier. Mm -hmm. Dit is nog soveel, ek was het twee keer die check, is het fijn. Maar as het mm -hmm. kom na 20 of 22 keer, en jy is net, so met elke keer, met alle woorde, op, uit die 20 of 22 keer moet jy die tyker spot aanwees. En wat ook die geval is, is jy op een, op een marshal 2 seconde vroeg is, en op een ander en het 2 laat is, Kanseleer dit niet uit niet. Het is 4 seconden, of so 4 punten. So dit is, dit is niet, dit is niet een sommetje wat nou maak wat vroeg en laat is en dan kanseleer het uit niet. Op een op een gemiddeld, um, wat 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 iemand nou noem, op op een Marshall punt op een gemiddeld. Als jij als jij wel in de top 10 eindig en jij wil kijken om te winnen, zal jij per Marshall points moet jij zeker maken dat jij onder 2 seconden is. Als jij zodra jij meer dan twee secondes op een Marshall punt um, op averages, dan 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 zal je niet die rally winnen. Um, op een gemiddeld zullen over die rally voor die dag winnen. Uh, enige iets hier tussen zo so twee maximum misschien vijf secondes op een open punt uitwezen. Is kan ook verstaan hoe kom jij 
Pues me hace picho ahora, igual está. Y me da de quedo, porque te abre mi tía, mi tía. 100% en de muro en este momento, ahora está en el fin de la muro. En el glomay, 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 en el en el glomay, 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 en el Um, en, en wat ik op mijn route gedoen het, die laatste twee uh, clues was, of die laatste clue was turn left into Kisera, waar ons, waar ons toe ingedraai het. En ek lees toe die laatste clue, want ek kyk toe bietie laar op mijn route af, waar ik moet doen. En ik kom bij die T-aansluiting, waar ik eerst moest rechts gedraai het, en toe links gedraai het. En ek lees toe draai links, en ek moet links plaats van rechts. En... Uh, en toen ik besef dat ik mijn fout gemaakt had, in die tijd wat ik omgedraaid heb en terug op spoed was, toen is hij klaar. Ik denk dat ik hier bij die 18 of 17 seconden iets daar rond gehad op die laatste punt. En, en dat heeft mij die rally gekost, want die ou wat, wat, wat mij gewin het, al heet ik zoals ik gezegd al heb ik 10 seconden daar gekregen. Zo so ik kom met, met, met 1 seconde gewin het voor die, die dag. Maar we zo kom ik zeg, één fout als je als je als je als je ernstig rally en en dan dan is je maar uit voor die dag en dan dan gaan drink je bier en je kan je samen allemaal. Is daar nog een andere vraag van nieuw? Nog iemand dat vraag of vraag dan? Nieuw, als jij als jij weet jij is laat, jij 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 moet nou dertig kilometer hier zijn en jij Jy besef nou, jy toets jouself in eberskielig punt jy uit, maar jy is nou 30 sekondes laat. Hoe bepaal jy, wat moet jy nou rui, voordat jy weer reg is? So, so dit gaan totaal af van hoe die route gestel is, um, as, da, as daar redelijk clues is, um, as, jou volgende, as jou volgende punt een vaste punt is, um, dan hoop jij en bid maar dat daar nou niet een marshal tussen en is niet. Maar dus ook om ook omdat het belangrijk is dat jij die voertuig probeert goed te kennen waarmee jij rijdt. So als jij nou, nou vaststelt dat jij 30 seconden laat, en zoals jij zegt, je moet nu 30 kilo hier gereden, moet jij basis een gevoel krijgen en zeggen: als ik nou mijn motorfiets druk tot op zijn maximum spoed, wat ik weet dat ik kan of moet rijden. Of ik weet die in 60 begin mijn fiets dit doen. Dan kom ik zo so vanaf op dat stadium. Dan moet ik in mijn kop ook voor mijn uitwerken en zeggen: als ik als ik voor een afstand van x uh, die in 60 kilometer i rij, ga ik daar 30 seconden opmaken binnen een kilo of een kilo en een half. Die in 60 kilometer i kom ik nummer spoed. Dan moet ik daar, dan doe ik daar zo met in mijn kop en zeg: ik moet voor een kilometer en een half moet ik zo so vanaf als moeilijk tot op 60 kom, dat ik daar 30 kilo of daar 30 seconden kan opmaken. En dan als ik mijn volgende club krijg, dan weet ik, oké, okay, nu kan ik weer terug naar na die, na die, na die 30 kilometer hier toe. Dit komt uit ervaring, je denkt, Philip, maar, maar of, of een vaste punt, um, wat jij maar dan jou, jou spoed bieke vermeerder, totdat je bij die volgende vaste punt komt. Maar gewoonlijk, als daar fout komt, is jouw volgende vaste punt is dan een change speed of a, of dus een bloemkomboom en je is in middel van een bloemkomplantatie of zoiets en dan is daar nou niet dat punt nie. So dit is maar ook waar je in die kop uh, waar je moet verstaan om 30 seconden op te maken met een beetje van een gerei voor so ver en dan kan ik weer terug zijn naar die, na die 30 kilo toe. Het is amper diezelfde als je in het draai in kop. Um, je weet afhankelijk van die organiseerders. Um, wat hulle betekent je doen als je bijvoorbeeld bij die aansluiting inkomt, zal hulle sê, oké, okay, go from 60 km an hour to 30 km an hour, op een kom en sê, julle gaan sê, stop in 500 meters. Dan zal hulle jou afvat na, na, na 30 km hier toe. Maar je moet onthou, hulle vat jou door die die aansluiting, tegen 30 km hier. Jij moet stop, en jy moet weer wegtrek. En, maar, maar, jou, maar, jou, maar jou route schedule, Sê jij gaan weer daar draai in 30 km hier. So wanneer jij daar weg draai, kom ons sê die, jou tijd het gesê, jy moet op 1 minuut langs draai. 
dan moet jij kijken als jij wegtrekt daar, trek jij op 1 minuut weg of trek je op 1 minuut 5 of 1 minuut 10 of 1 minuut 20 secondes weg. Want dan moet jij op die 20 secondes wat je weer moet opmaken als je die die draai gegaan hebt. En bij mensen vergeet het, je komt in, je stopt, je kijkt naar je masterclock en je zegt, oké, okay, one minute. Nou trek je weg, in die tijd wat jij op spoed is, het je k 10, 20, 30 secondes verloor. So jy moet dit inwerk en hoe vinnig jy weer op spoed kom, en jy moet die, is precies die, die sommiekie nou in jou kop maak om te sê, ek moet die volgende rikkie met ek, bykie vinnig gerei, dan kan ek terugsnui na die, na die spoed toe wat op my, op my skriel is. Ja, nee, ek haal my hoed af vir julle is, op, op die DJ en dat motorfietse rijd, wat, wat al die huigoes gelijktijdig doen, plus jy moet nog op die pad doen. Ek, ek denk, ek denk vir allemaal op die, op die oproep, uh, jy weet, daar sal, daar sal daar kom op een op op DJ of op een op Magnum, dan sal jy letterlijk vir die mense kan sê, ek het daar gestop vir, 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 vir brandstof, en ek het daar gestop vir, vir middag ete. En die rest van die route is, as die ding sê, ek moet links draai, draai krins, as hy sê, ek moet rechts draai, draai krins, so jy kyk nie as rarig die omgeving nie, jy, ach, jy weet my nog meer waar jy rai, maar jy letterlijk, jy, Jy weet amper nie waar jy rui nie, jy volg nie die route en dit is my, dit is, dit is, jy, jy is redelijk moeg as jy die dag afklim van die motorfiets, want dan, jy concentreer die hele dag nie. 